I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Now, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit. And the first benefit of that, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And that's good. If you're fulfilling the lust of the flesh, you're not walking in the Spirit. So uh, that's the first thing we learn. Then he says, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the uh, Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. So we can't do what we want to do. Uh, we need to commit to doing what is right to, to do. But if you be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now notice this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, uh, seditions, uh, heresies, envyings, murders, uh, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is, and there are nine, three sets of three, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and then faith, meekness, and temperance. Meekness and temperance have a lot of similarities. We're going to look at meekness tonight, uh, faith next week, and then the last one we'll look at uh, temperance. I'm going to give you a couple of definitions, and I want to ask you, would you please make note of these? Uh, would you please uh, write down these two simple definitions? If you have a pencil, could I get you to do that? And if you don't, uh, uh, do your best to store uh, this, uh, these definitions in your mind. The one is very common. Uh, meekness is not weakness, it's power under control. Uh, meekness is not weakness, it is power under control. And I've given that definition many times in referencing this fruit of the spirit of meekness. Let me give you another one, and this is a brand new wording of a definition of meekness. It is using your position and power of that position to fulfill your purpose. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, now, fulfilling your position, fulfilling your power to fulfill your purpose. Using your position, your power to fulfill your purpose. Not to abuse your position. Not to abuse your power. Not to fail in your position. But meekness is using your power, your, purp uh, your uh, position to fulfill your purpose. Now, let's think just for a moment. What power do I have? What, what position do I have? Well, first of all, you are a Christian. Uh, you are either a light in this world or you're blending into the darkness. We're supposed to be a light in this world. Uh, we're more than that. Uh, you're a husband. Uh, you're, a, you're a husband. You're a father. Uh, you're a brother. You're a sister. Uh, the influence of that and on and on every person. And I'll give a long list of those in just a few minutes. And so meekness is using your position, using your power to fulfill your purpose. Purpose. Let me give you a couple illustrations. The engine of a car is very powerful, and yet it's placed under control. It's placed under control. I want you to think about the number of controls there is on an automobile engine. For example, it's controlled by the throttle, uh, the gas pedal, the throttle, uh, controls the power of the engine, and so it's power under control. You don't just turn your engine on it run wide open. Uh, it is controlled by a throttle. It's controlled by a muffler system. The exhaust is controlled. Uh, it is controlled by a carburetor and that's the mechanism that uh, uh, mixes the air and fluid or the, uh, or, or the fuel, not fluid, but the fuel mixes the air and the fuel and it regulates that. If you get a carburetor that gives uh, too much air or it allows too much fuel, uh, the car 
won't run. And so it has to have a proper control. It's controlled by air intake. It is controlled by brakes. And so our cars, we don't just turn them on and they just take off full blast. No, it's power under control. It's using the position. It's using the power to fulfill the purpose, to get where we're going in a safe manner. Now, meekness is not as much about control as it is the proper use of power. And I want you to make note of that, if you will, please. Meekness is not a much, as much about control. So many times we think of the negative rather than we do the purpose of the positive. Meekness is not me just controlling the power, but it's using the power to fulfill my purpose. Uh, some folks, they, they call laziness meekness, and it's not meekness, it's laziness. Well, he's just a meek person. Well, a meek person uses his power, uses his position uh, to do and to fulfill the purpose of his life, whether it's a, a teacher, whether it's a preacher, uh, whether it's a, a Christian testimony, a husband, a wife, a, a mother, or a father. While you and I may possess various strengths, authorities, powers, or controls over situations, it's important that we have meekness in our life, not by decision, but by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Now, how do we walk in the Spirit? We have to read the Bible. If you haven't read the Bible this week, you're not walking in the Spirit. If you haven't spent time in prayer, you're not walking in the Spirit. It's not something that you imagine doing. It's something you actually do. If you haven't yielded your body, if you haven't yielded your flesh to the Word of God and in prayer, uh, you aren't walking in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit is obeying uh, the laws of God. Now, power and authority out of control demonstrates itself with anger. Power and authority that's out of control demonstrates itself with hateful expressions. Power and authority out of control. And we've seen folks in every walk of life, rather than using their position, using their authority, they abuse it and there is an anger, there's a frustration. You, you shouldn't be mad about being a Christian. You should be glad that you're a child of God. We shouldn't feel like we're sentenced because uh, we are a testimony for Christ. We should be excited about being a testimony for Christ. And so uh, 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 meekness is not demonstrated with anger. It is not demonstrated with hateful expression. Uh, it is not demonstrated with unfair penalties or taking advantage of a position in a way that would hurt someone. But if I fulfill my purpose, I help others around me. Uh, as a father, I'm supposed to be helping my children know and do the will of God. As a husband, I'm to help my wife know and do the will of God. As a pastor, I'm to help you to know and do the will of God. That's what meekness is. We all see situations where authority is abusive rather than using its authority to help people. For example, uh, we have a lot of frustrations with our government. And our government's out of control. And, and we all know that it's a house of cards and can fall at any time. We're trillions of dollars in debt. And the shame and embarrassment of government, it's hard to find hope in government because of the abuse of their authority. Uh, we've seen armies, for example, Russia. Uh, they're not using uh, their army to defend their homeland. Uh, they're using it to take land that doesn't belong to them as they've uh, attacked Ukraine in an unfair and an unjust war. And so armies are supposed to be used to be a help and a protection to their people. Now Jesus described himself this way, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls. Anytime you get close to Christ, anytime you walk with Him, you will be helped, not harmed. Because He's meek, He's lowly, He will help you. And, and, and that word yoke uh, puts two people together to work. A yoke is not a hammock. Hello? 
A yoke is not a hammock. A yoke is where people work together. So he said if we will work with him, he will help us because he is meek. That means he's not mean. That means he's not angry. That means he's not trying to hurt us with his authority. He is trying to take his strength and help us. Paul said, in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. And so we come to the yoke and we find help because of his meekness. Jesus was God manifest, manifest in flesh. Take your Bibles and go uh, to Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we're in Galatians. Go to Philippians chapter 2 and go to verse number 5. Jesus possessed in himself power to create a galaxy. And yet he chose to humble himself and become flesh. Now, I want to go back to that first, illust or that first uh, definition. What is uh, the definition of meekness? It's using our position and power to fulfill our purpose. So what was the purpose of Jesus coming? It was not to create a world. He'd already done that at the creation. He came this time and he humbled himself. He reduced his power to the place that he walked and lived among sinful men. Here's what the Bible says. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, notice these words, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. When you, when, you, when you pick up a child, when you pick up a baby and you hold a baby, you're careful. You don't use all of your strength. You, you use the strength that's needed to cuddle, to caress, to love the child. And so what God did, He didn't come uh, to bring fire uh, from heaven. He didn't come to create another world. He came to save men that were lost, uh, that were on death row. And so He humbled Himself and He fulfilled His purpose. So what is meekness for me. It is me yielding myself to whatever the need is, whatever the situation is to accomplish God's will for that particular time. A teacher may have a, 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 an a education a, a well beyond high school and college and years of college, and yet when they go to the first grade, uh, they don't teach what they learned in college. Uh, they teach on a first grade level. That's what God did. He humbled himself and fulfilled his purpose, and he did it kindly. We shouldn't be angry about what God, what God called us to do. We should be thankful that we have the opportunity to humble ourselves and be what we need to do, what we need to be for that situation. Paul said it like this, I become all things to all men. Now some misinterpret that and say, uh, if, if, if he needs to smoke dope to reach the hippies, that's, what it, that's not at all what that means. Paul, he humbled himself or he became meek. He did not use all of his education. He did not use all of his authority. He did not use all of the power of his uh, position, uh, but he met the need. He humbled himself in meekness. Think about this. Jesus had the power to turn water into wine, to multiply loaves and fishes, to still the storm, to cleanse the leper, to command the demon, uh, uh, to uh, leave uh, an individual or a place and raise the dead. And when Pilate threatened Jesus, let, let's look at it. John chapter 19. This is, this is an amazing illustration of what meekness is. John 19 verse number 11. Let's look at verse number 10. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Notice what Jesus said. Jesus answered, Thou could have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivereth me unto thee hath 
the greater sin. You, you see what he says here? He said, you have no power except what God has given you. When Pilate threatened him, when the Sanhedrin sent its minions to arrest Christ, all he had to say was, I am. And they went backward and fell to the ground. Uh, when, you, when you read that account in John chapter 18, the chapter before, listen to these words of John chapter 10. Therefore doeth my father love me because I lay down my life. What does that mean? Me Meekness, that I may take it again. He's fulfilling his purpose. Meekness is yielding to the situation, yielding to the need at hand. Dad, meekness is yielding to the need at hand. Mom, meekness is yielding to the need at hand and fulfilling your purpose. The Bible says in John 19, 28, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. That's an interesting thing. On the cross, he didn't say anything about being thirsty. He didn't say anything about himself until he had fulfilled his purpose. Are you with me tonight? So meekness is not me using my strength, my position, my power to get what I want, but for me to accomplish God's will for my life. I'm enjoying this lesson tonight. Jesus demonstrated this fruit of the Spirit, meekness which is power under control, meekness which is yielding His power to fulfill God's purpose for His life. Now listen to me. Look right this way. The devil sends so many distractions in our life. And it's sad today that churches have a great commission. I don't care who you ask, anybody that's familiar with the Bible or religion, you say, what is a great commission? Well, let's go into all the world and preach the gospel. We start in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. Are you doing that? Well, not right now. Why are you not doing that right now? Well, we've got so many issues. I'll tell you why. We, we allow the devil to distract us. Jesus was very kind, but he set his face uh, as a flint in the will of God, and he never flinched. He stayed focused in the will of God. Meekness is not allowing my temper to get out of control because somebody distracts me, somebody tries to make me angry, but it's staying focused. I'll give you this illustration. Many times there are there are. Uh, athletes, football, basketball, especially basketball. Football's a little easier to get revenge because you have to line up and go at it again. But basketball, you don't get to do that. And oftentimes I've seen athletes, they can't accomplish their purpose because they stay angry all the time. They're either mad at the referees or they're mad at other players or mad at other folks rather than staying focused on their purpose. Meekness is power, not just under control, but power used to fulfill its purpose. Now the very purpose of this lesson tonight and this series is to say that you and I, we can walk in the Spirit and we can produce this fruit of meekness in our lives. Meekness is found throughout the Bible. We find it in example in Numbers. Take your Bibles and go to Numbers chapter 12 and the life of Moses. Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Now does that mean Moses was weak? We know he wasn't, but we know he wasn't uh, weak. He committed murder. I mean physically killed a man because he was uh, hurting one of the slaves. He was being mistreating one of the slaves. Moses was not at all a weak person, but Moses was very meek. What does that mean? Moses used his power, he used his position to fulfill God's purpose in his life. The ultimate statement of Moses that he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God. You know why he did that? Because he wanted to fulfill God's purpose for his life. That's what meekness is. M uh, uh, the means that Moses had uh, uh, great power. Uh, Moses had, when you think about uh, how he grew up and the education that he received and, and uh, 
that he was Pharaoh's daughter. He had authority and, and I think a very strong personality. I think he had a quick temper because we see that uh, exhibited. By the way, God described Moses as a meek person even though there are times that he failed. Overall, he was in meekness. Now that encourages me because if you ask me, are you always meek? I always try. I don't always succeed, but that is my goal. And that's exactly what Moses did. Moses is described as a meek person. But there are times that God told him, he said, speak to the rock. And, and Moses took the rod and he smote the rock. He did that out of, out of anger. He was not meek that day. But I'm glad that God judges the fight, aren't you? He doesn't judge because you got knocked down in round five. You don't lose the battle. And he described Moses. Moses as a meek individual. And I love this because Moses was a man of power. He was a man of authority. And he used his position. He used his power to accomplish God's will for his life. Let me ask you a question. Are you using your position? Are you using your authority To accomplish God's will in your life. When's the last time you thought about God's will? What's God's will for my life? What am I supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to be going through life just eating three meals a day and 14 snacks between those three meals and going to sleep at night and working seven, eight, ten hours a day and just going? The will of God is the most satisfying thing in all the world to accomplish the will of God. It is sad to note that Moses lost control of his temper and was kept out of the promised land because of it, because his life is described as one of meekness. There are many oxymorons in the Bible. An oxymoron is, is something that the opposite is true of what seems to be true. Now the reason I say that every oxymoron we find in the Bible requires meekness. Meekness is not weakness. It is us controlling. It's using the throttle on our power. For example, I'll give you this. As a Christian, the way to live is to die. Brother Davis preached at the National Young Fundamentalist Conference and had a coffin up here in front of the pulpit and he gave every teenager a piece of corn and he said, God says, you can do whatever you want to do with your life. You have that right. Your life is yours. You can control it any way you want. But if you decide you want to live, the only way you can live is to die to self, to live in the will of God. And I watched them one by one and hundreds come by and take that grain, take that corn and throw it in the casket as if to say, I'm going to die to self because I want to accomplish the will of God. That's meekness. Meekness is saying, I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to do what I feel like doing. But I'm going to use my talents. I'm going to use my ability. I'm going to use my education. I'm going to die to my dreams. And I'm going to give my life to God. I'm going to die that I might live that's what meekness is. Meekness is fulfilling God's purpose for our life. The way to get in the Christian life is to give. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that I can live on 90% of my income and, and, and be more blessed or have more than if I kept 100% of my income. Now, some may say, well, it doesn't make any sense. I'm not, I'm not going to give 10%. I need that 10%. I need the blessings of God more than I need that 10%. And I know it's true, not just because the Bible says it, but I've lived it all my life and I've seen God provide and bless and do things that I cannot explain outside of my faithfulness to give. And God says as a proper steward, if you'll just give me 10% of what belongs to me, I'll bless your life. Now it takes meekness to say, I'm going to crucify how I feel, how I reason, what I think. I'm going to crucify that and I'm going to obey the Word of God. The way to control is to yield or to serve. 
Uh, for example, David was the greatest king of man to sit on the throne of Israel. Why? Because he was a servant of the people. I watched the coronation of King Charles. How many of you saw the coronation of King Charles? That was impressive. I told Brother Young every student in school ought to watch the coronation of King Charles and, and, and all that they did. And, and one of the statements that he made as he, came to sit, as he came to sit on the throne and before they put the crown on his head, he, he made this statement, I come not to the throne to be served. I come to the throne to serve. That is what a king is supposed to do. He is not supposed to be the ultimate dictator. He is supposed to be the ultimate servant. He has more opportunities to serve the people than any other person. And David proved the, the best way to control or to lead all the people is to serve them. Rehoboam said, I've got a better idea. I talked to these young men over here. These young men, they have, they have degrees from all the big universities, and so I'm going to do what they say. Hey, we're not going to follow those old-fashioned ideas of David. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise the taxes, and nobody in this world has ever seen a king as rich and powerful as I'm going to be. But he didn't rule the, he didn't rule the people. He divided the nation and scattered the people. You know what David did? He was a leader of meekness. He didn't use his power to help himself. He used his power to serve others. That's what meekness is. Your position, whether you're a Sunday school teacher, that's not, that's not to make you a better person. As a Sunday school teacher, you're helping others to become a better Christian. The pastor is the servant of the people. The school teacher is the servant of the students. Now, some may say, uh, well, you just let them push over you. That's not meekness. Meekness sticks by the rules. Meekness does right, but it doesn't do right for personal gain. It does right uh, for those uh, that we are serving. When you, think of, uh, when you think of world history, Alexander the Great, Caesar, Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin, they never imagined meekness to be a key to the world conquest. But Jesus did. Think of this. When Jesus presented himself to Israel as the nation's long-awaited Messiah, get this picture, think of this. He rode into Jerusalem in triumph. Don't miss it. On a donkey. Imagine what the Romans said. Here comes the king <laughs> on a donkey. <laughs> Can you imagine? Who does he think he is? He's a king and he's coming into town. That's what the Romans would have said. Now hear me well. Many Christians have let the world tell them how to live the Christian life. And that's why our light has gone out in the nation. That's why our light's gone out in the world. That's why women this summer will dress like harlots and show their bodies. And I, I, just, I just want to go on record. I'm not interested in seeing your body. And you shouldn't tempt men with your body. And you ought to dress decent. And you don't need the world to tell you how to dress. We need to let the Bible tell us how to dress. You say, well, well, I, 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 want to, I want to be somebody in life. You want to be somebody? Live with this book right here. Jesus is. Jesus was the king. Imagine what the Romans thought. Don't worry what the Romans think. Let's follow what the Bible says. Let me give you this verse. The Holy Spirit said all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell ye the daughter of Zion behold thy king cometh unto thee meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt the foal of an ass. Now the world may think that's stupid but Jesus said meekness or using my position using my power to fulfill my purpose, that is, the, that is the will of God and that's what meekness is.